Now, after answering this question a whole bunch of times over the years, I have finally kind of come up with my three-step model for how to prepare for AWS exams. Hey friends, Cloudbart here. It just stopped raining recently and the fog looked pretty cool, so I thought I'd share that with you. You know, I get asked all the time, what are some of the best ways for me to prepare for an AWS certification? Or how do I know when I'm ready and I'm gonna pass the certification? Because let's face it, it takes a lot of work. Uh, it could be a lot of cost involved with it. And so yeah, people are concerned about whether or not they're gonna pass it. Now, after answering this question a whole bunch of times over the years, I have finally kind of come up with my three-step model for how to prepare for AWS exams. And it starts with first immerse or sponge. That's my first phase. And then after that, assess. And then step three, repeat. <laughs> so let's take a look at talking about some of where the best resources are, how to sponge, how to assess, and then what to do when it's time to repeat that process and go back through for a second time. Now in the soaking phase, I encourage you to go out there and probably start by watching AWS videos. So I would go out and find the AWS uh, YouTube playlists. And indeed, if you find the actual AWS YouTube site here, yeah, there we go. Okay, uh, down here to youtube.com slash user Amazon Web Services. Um, Amazon does a really good job of publishing a lot of content out there on YouTube and out there on their main websites as well. This is going to be a great place for you to go and learn information about what they're doing, start understanding some of the terminology that's out there. And um, as you dig down in, indeed, take a look at some of the playlists, I encourage you to go over and take a look at some of the reInvent um, activity. Now, Generally speaking, when your first get started, you're going to want to stick to like the 100 and 200 series level content. Those are going to be designed for entry level or introductory folks uh, new to the services who maybe don't have a ton of understanding about the rest of the AWS portfolio. So start with that level of content. And remember, guys, this is all about the soaking phase. You're not necessarily supposed to be developing a massive understanding. You're supposed to be bringing yourself up to speed um, and really kind of kicking off the edges of all of these uh, misunderstandings that you might have. Along the way, what you're going to invariably find is that you might not know that much about some of the uh, wide world of technology. We get into things like network load balancers. You start talking about uh, VPN, um, token authentication, integrated identities. These are a lot of different areas of specialization that have huge deep dives that you can do on them already. So in this initial soaking phase, just kind of get yourself simmering in the data um, and in the terminology and in the mechanisms and patterns that you're hearing people talk about um, in the AWS world. Along the way, make a note of the technologies that you feel good about. Many of us might know databases. You might be more comfortable coming from the networking side of things. So make a note of the things that you feel initially confident on. Okay, and then kind of grade them in one of three different levels. Either you feel pretty confident you're unsure or you're definitely certain that you don't know much about that. These are all good things that are gonna help you later on when you get into that phase where you need to begin assessing where your skill sets are. You've already identified some areas that you know you're going to need to brush up on. Now, as you go through immersing, okay, one of the key things that I really like people to look at is called the AWS Well-Architected Framework. Now, this is a series of best practices and I cannot express the importance enough here of how valuable this is. This is the lifeblood and indeed a lot of the backbone behind most of the AWS certifications that are out there. Let's take a look at it real quick. So over on Google, we can take a look AWS Well-Architected. Uh, you don't have to put the whole thing in there. You should be able to find it. Yeah, there you go. AWS Well-Architected Framework. Okay. And indeed, you'll notice that it is actually a part of the slash architecture site. So the AWS well-architected framework is all about best practices. And as you kind of scroll down in here, you'll see that they go into the framework and the framework is broken into five different pillars. You've got operational excellence, security, uh, reliability, performance, efficiency, uh, and then you've got cost optimization is the final one. Now, these five different areas of best practices will lead you down um, all of the big areas that cover, uh, especially in the solutions architect exam. So as a solutions architect, Amazon wants you to take the well-architected framework and use it as the guide for how to solve particular problems in different patterns. So when you kind of move towards the soaking phase and you're feeling pretty comfortable and you're beginning to move into that next phase and you're thinking, okay, uh, I feel pretty good. 
I've got the terminology. I know what I'm weak on, and I've studied on that a little bit more um, by watching videos, by using the CBT Nuggets content that's available in my catalog, uh, the stuff that's available on my YouTube site and abroad. And you want to know where do you stand? Am I ready to take the test? Okay, what I try to encourage people to do before they go taking practice exams is to take a final look at that well-architected framework. And as you go through the well-architected framework, and I mean looking through all the different pillars, uh, all told it's only around 70 to 100 pages long, so it's not that much information to read. But in the documentation, you're gonna find specific services that are mentioned and specific technologies and patterns that you're gonna to need to be familiar with as well. So make a note of those pieces and that is what you wanna dive into next. Now, when you've got that final list there, you've done your soaking, you've done your assessment, you know what you're weak on, the final trick that I try to get people to think about in this process of preparing for the AWS certs is using the service frequently asked questions. So let's say that I come up and I recognize that RDS, the Relational Database Service, is something that I knew I was a little weak on in the beginning. After reading the Architected Framework, I still realize I don't know much about it. I don't understand replication. Maybe I don't know some of the service offerings that it has. So what I would do next is go and find the frequently asked questions for the Relational Database Service. So I would look up AWS RDS FAQs. <laughs> Isn't a nice uh, little mess of letters there? And indeed, there they are, the frequently asked questions for the relational database service. And as you might imagine, a frequently asked questions page is all about just that. The common things that people are asking AWS's support professionals and their help teams uh, and their architects internally, the things that people typically misunderstand about those products. So I would read through the FAQs. And then once I've done that, I would say, okay, what else don't I know about RDS? Odds are, as you read through the frequently asked questions, you have found some links that were of interest and you've cruised on over to those, or maybe you've got some remainder topics that you know you're still gonna be weak on. So this is where you go back to your soak phase and you dig into the pieces that you're missing. Looking at the initial phase, you identify what you were weak on. You did your assessment by reading the well-architected framework and defining what else you were still weak on. And then you looked up the frequently asked questions on those products and services and dug a little deeper. And now you're ready to go back and soak through on the second pass targeted this time. Not everything, but specific pieces that you know you're weak on. Now, once you get through this process once or twice, uh, a couple of times, and you're feeling really pretty good and you want to know finally, am I really ready? This is when you'd want to go and take the AWS practice exams. So next, I would jump over here to the AWS training and certification portal. This should get you a link into the certification area. Yeah, there it is, aws.training, sign in. Great. Now, I already have an account built, so I can just go ahead and sign myself in. If you haven't set up an AWS account, you will want to get that going. You'll also need an Amazon account to get yourself set up for the initial uh, training and certification efforts. Once you're ready to go and take an exam, if you go over here to certification, okay, you can go down and jump into the actual certification scheduler. Now, this is going to take you over to Cert Metrics. This is currently Amazon's um, testing management service. And then down below, if you go over to schedule new exam, you can look up the actual exam date information. So down in here, I can scroll down until I see the practice exams. Let me collapse. Yeah, I'll collapse these down. Great. And down at the bottom, you can see the practice exam. So here's the Solutions Architect Associate. Okay. And I can go and schedule that with PSI, PSI testing, or with Pearson View. On to the next prompts, it's asking you for information about where you want to go take the test. So in the end, you should be able to go through and take the practice exam and get a good feel for what you're finally missing. When you get done taking the exam, go back into your soak, assess, <laughs> and then repeat process as much as you need to to get yourself comfortable. Uh, keep in mind, there is a cost associated with the practice exam. So if you're not sure that you want to spend any money on it yet, there are also some practice questions that are available. So over here on Google, if we do an AWS Solutions Architect, certification sample questions. That's a big query there. <laughs> yeah, there we go down here. You can see the link they have here to the associate SAA zero uh, C01 sample exam. Open up that PDF and you're gonna get, I think it's just 10 questions that they had in here. Yeah, 10 questions. So here's 10 questions that go over some content that you're gonna find on the exam. This is a great 
small sample of what you're going to find. Um, and if you still feel confident after having worked through these, maybe you're ready to spend a, a couple of bucks to go and take the practice exam. At some point, I highly recommend doing the practice exam. It's definitely uh, worth the effort of making sure that you get that done. So just to kind of recap everything that we talked about here, uh, get yourself started by soaking. Read the information, get the AWS provided course material that's out there um, on, in the study guides, use their YouTube videos, watch my content, check out the CBT Nuggets content that we have available as well. And then after that, read the well-architected framework, use that as an assessment for what you feel weak on, and then use that to find out what FAQs you should read through on the products. Once you've identified products and areas you're weak on, repeat that process, focusing on your weaknesses. And then when you're ready, take the practice tests, use the sample exams, and make a final decision on whether or not you're feeling good about taking the exam. Now, I've used all of these methods that I described to prepare for all of the AWS exams that I've taken over the years, and it's worked out beautifully. Amazon does a great job with documentation. Those FAQs are a great resource paired up with the well-architected framework, and you're armed with 99% of the content uh, and information you need to go and really prep for almost any of the AWS certifications that are out there, even though I just talked about Solutions Architect primarily in this lesson. If you have questions, hit me up. Make sure you subscribe and stay active out there on the YouTube channels, and I'll see you in the cloud.